when we talk about creating vaccines, um, we want the vaccine to stimulate a strong immune response in the individual. It has to really stimulate the immune system because only in a strong immune response where you activate both the innate and adaptive arms of the immune system, B cells and T cells, will you end up getting production of high affinity antibody that could be used to neutralize the pathogen, as well as getting the production of memory cells. So stimulating a strong immune response is essential in any vaccine. And when we talk about what is part of a strong immune response, we talk about things like antigen presentation, antigen processing and presentation on MHC molecules, cytokines. You need cytokines to be released to activate uh, immune cells, to recruit immune cells. Cytokines are really important in promoting a, an immune response. Inflammation, a normal response to, to infection. Um, complement activation. So uh, vaccines, uh, for them to be really effective, they have to mimic a real infection because you don't want the immune system to activate against anything. You want it to activate against pathogens. So the vaccines need to mimic pathogens as close as they can. For vaccines that contain live attenuated pathogens or killed inactivated pathogens, there are, there, for the live ones, they will actually replicate in your body and your body will be able to detect, hey, there's a pathogen here, let's activate the immune system. For even for the many of the killed or inactivated vaccines, there are molecules present in those pathogens that provoke the immune system. The immune system recognizes the, that there's a pathogen via toll-like receptors or other receptors. So some vaccines provoke immune response just on their own via the pathogen. The pathogen is recognized and <clears throat> targeted. But other vaccines, like subunit vaccines or conjugate vaccines, don't tend to provoke a very good immune response on their own. Because a lot of times these are just proteins or sugars that we inject into the body. The body doesn't know if this is from a pathogen or not, um, because it might not engage very many immune complex immune receptors. Um, and just think about the fact that if you were injected with just some random protein, and maybe it's a protein or a sugar, let's say, from a pathogen, the immune system's not going to know if that's pa pathogenic. It's not going to know. Uh, it might bind it with a B-cell receptor, but, you know, toll-like receptors aren't being activated. Uh, mannose receptors, other, other immune uh, receptors aren't being engaged. So uh, you don't want your immune system activating against anything. You want it to activate only against a pathogen. So the vaccine needs to stimulate the immune system to tell it, hey, wake up, activate. And sometimes uh, some vaccines don't have that ability. Just injecting a protein into your uh, body, into your skin, the immune system might recognize it, might not, but if it's not uh, mimicking an infection, the immune system should ignore it. And you want your immune system to ignore most things. You only want it to activate against pathogens. So in some vaccines, there are molecules, there are chemicals added to it called adjuvants. Adjuvants, and there's a wide range of adjuvants. Adjuvants are substances present in vaccines that provoke an immune response. They provoke inflammation, they provoke cytokine production, they provoke immune system uh, activation, innate and adaptive immune response. Um, so they mimic a, an infection. Um, and so when uh, immune cells are exposed to uh, subunits of pathogen and adjuvants, immune systems activate much better. They recognize that this is an infection. They think it's an infection. We fooled them into thinking it's an infection. And so there's inflammation. There's cytokine response. There are leukocyte uh, recruitment and activation. And this is going to help stimulate a strong immune response that's going to give you um, memory, it's going to give you isotype switching, infinity maturation, and memory cells. Um, so substances in vaccines need to be immunogenic, right? And so it, adjuvants are immunogenic. They provoke an immune response. And it's not just the pathogen subunit. It has to be other molecules. It can be other molecules like adjuvants. Um, your book gives an example of vaccines that don't provoke a good immune response versus do. So we covered the DPT vaccine um, in a previous video. So the 
the DTTP vaccine contains the diphtheria toxoid, the tetanus toxoid, and the pertussis bacteria killed and inactivated. And of course, the bacteria, even if it's killed, it's going to have all sorts of molecules on it that engage toll-like receptors. And when they engage toll-like receptors, the immune system knows, hey, we got an infection here, let's release cytokines, and that's going to cause inflammation and stimulate an immune response. Um, if uh, you just injected toxoids into the body, diphtheria toxoid and tetanus toxoid, and this was done um, a while ago, doesn't provoke such a strong immune response. And it's because if you just put those in alone, you're not um, mimicking a real infection. The immune system thinks, well, well there's some proteins here. Eh, maybe I'll activate it against them. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, because there's not a strong um, uh, immunogenic response. So most vaccines have to have something in them that provoke an immune response. And these uh, molecules called adjuvants do that. So two very common adjuvants are alum and MF59, which is a proprietary mixture uh, made by Novartis. Um, alum has aluminum compounds in it, aluminum salts, aluminum hydroxide. MF59 it has a, um, a number of compounds in it, a number of oil lipid compounds. And both of these substances, um, both of these substances provoke a immune response. They're immunogenic. When they're injected into the body, inflammation occurs. Cytokines get released. Leukocytes uh, get activated and recruited. Their mechanism of action, uh, unclear, actually. It's not very clear. There are a lot of hypotheses on how these provoke an immune response. But when these are injected into the body, boom, you get an immune response. The innate immune system, the adaptive immune system. And that's going to help you stimulate antibody production, activation of T cells. Um, so these are two very commonly used adjuvants, although their mechanism of action, not very clear how they work. Um, there are newer classes of uh, chemical adjuvants, which are TLR agonists. We know TLRs are innate immune receptors that get engaged during an infection, and this is going to help trigger cytokine production and activation of many immune cells and even non-immune cells. You find TLR receptors on many cells in the body, not just immune cells. And TLRs bind um, non-self molecules. And so when a TLR is engaged, the body knows, oh, something is here that doesn't belong here. So provoke an immune response. So there are many molecules that mimic TLR ligands and they are, can be included in vaccines to mimic an infection. So for example, uh, TLR4 agonist monophospholipid A, if that uh, MLA molecule is in a, uh, comp in a vaccine it's injected into the body, uh, MLA will bind TLR4. And if you engage TLR4, then you're going to provoke an immune response because the immune system thinks, hey, something's binding my TLR4 receptors, Normally, it's supposed to be LPS, um, lipopolysaccharide, but MLA binds it just as well, and that's going to send a signal into the cell and activate this immune response. Uh, there are also other TLR agonists, so you can inject CPG DNA, which engages TLR9, lipopeptides engaging TLR2, you can inject flagellin protein, which engages TLR5. All of these, if they are present in, um, or any of these, I should say, if they're present in a... Uh, a shot that you've been given are going to provoke an immune response because they'll engage TLR receptors. So many vaccines contain adjuvants to provoke an immune response, which is required for um, full stimulation of the immune system. Um, lastly, let's talk about um, the reason why many people don't get vaccinated. You hear this um, from many people. Well, I don't get I don't get vaccines. I don't like getting vaccines. I don't like getting the flu shot because Every year, every time I get the flu shot, I get the flu. If you've heard that before, I'm sure you have, um, this is the response that you should have to those individuals. Uh, first of all, when you say flu shot, we're talking about being injected by, uh, with influenza proteins, so proteins that are um, on the surface of the influenza pathogen, um, uh, hemagglutinin, uh, 
the hemagglutinin proteins and the neuro, neuromin, <laughs> neuraminidase proteins. Uh, those are two proteins that are um, make up the uh, influenza virion. So in the flu shot, you find these two proteins because you would love to make antibodies that bind these two proteins because they would provoke antibody mediated oxidation, complement activation. So the flu shot contains uh, influenza virus proteins and adjuvant because when you put adjuvant in there, you get full activation of the immune system. So the flu shot contains these things. And when they say, well, I get the flu, no, you don't get the flu. It's impossible to get the flu from an influenza vaccine because there's no genetic material. Um, typically the virus is inactivated. It cannot replicate in you. So what you really are getting is a, an immune response, all right? The flu, right, when you feel, when you get the flu, flu-like symptoms, most of that is the immune system being activated. So if you feel achy, if you get feverish, um, if you feel tired, all of that is an immune response. It's cytokines being produced, it's inflammation, cytokines like IL-1 and IL-6 uh, go into your bloodstream, right? They target your hypothalamus and give you fever. They target the liver and produce acute phase proteins. Uh, TLRs can engage uh, mast cells, produce prostaglandins and leukotrienes and you feel achy and pain. So uh, many vaccines give you an immune response. So when somebody says they get the flu, they're not getting the flu, they're getting an immune response. And if they feel achy, you know what, that's great. That means their immune system is fully activated. That's wonderful. Uh, it is true that some individuals are more sensitive to adjuvants, most likely due to genetic um, polymorphisms uh, in genes that are code for proteins that bind adjuvants. So sure, some people are more sensitive to adjuvants and therefore more sensitive to immunizations. But you know what? Doesn't mean you get the flu. It means that you're having a great immune response. It means you've got a great immune system if it's reacting against these adjuvants. Um, so there you go. Um, this video covers adjuvants. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense.